But I want to thank everybody for coming out on this Sunday afternoon. Um, say that enough is enough. We have, as a community, been inundated with services that we provide to the rest of the city uh, that are on a level that no other neighborhood has to do. Uh, we have the largest wastewater treatment facility in the city of New York, just a few blocks away. We have uh, more waste transfer stations than any other community in the city of New York. Just a block away, we have the notorious Greenpoint Hotel, which right now is a three-quarters house where an organization brings people in, gives them housing for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, and then kicks them out. We do not need another transitional housing shelter in our neighborhood. And I think that at this point, we as a community have said no repeatedly for months now, for months. When the Department of Homeless Services came with their first group, uh, which was uh, Help USA, who never even bothered to come out to the community and talk to us, we said absolutely not. We said absolutely not. Yes, absolutely, absolutely not. not. Now when that deal fell through, they, they, they turned around and they brought in another group that's going to do the, that wants to do the exact same thing. So we're saying enough is enough, no way. So let's join me in saying enough is enough. 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 We have to, we have to stand strong and we have to stand united as a community and say we, we are not against uh, providing services. We're not against um, uh, the homeless population in New York City. We have a, 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 home, a homegrown uh, homeless issue right here in Greenpoint that the Department of Homeless Services refuses to recognize right. and do anything about. Right. And we've now, this year alone, this winter, two homeless individuals in our community died of hypothermia in McCarran Park. That's right. Department of Homeless Services has still not done enough to provide shelter for those guys, and instead they want to put 200 beds here of transitional assessment center housing. No way, no how. So I want to introduce my good friend and a, a representative of this community that has done so, so much in his in his career and for in in. In Greenpoint, uh, there is no one else like Joe Lentall. So, Assemblyman Joe Lentall. Yeah. Thank you very much. Since he didn't introduce himself, I know he doesn't need any introduction, but Council Member Steve Levin, I want to thank him for organizing this rally. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there are any members of the press here, even though Heather is here. I don't know if there are members of the press. And they're going to write this story as though we are NIMBY. Okay? This is going to be a NIMBY story from the point of view of the press, because we're saying not in our backyard. But the fact is that we, for too long, have said in our backyard. All you have to do is look at Greenpoint Hospital Shelter. For the last almost 30 years, we have been our brother's keeper and have taken care of the homeless problem for the city of New York. We have taken care of the homeless problem through our churches and through our synagogues, as few as they are here, and through people who have cared about the homeless pastors, priests, and rabbis. And what do we get for the good service that we have done for the city of New York? No fix for the homeless problem, as Steve said, right. of our own, yes, that absolutely. live in our parks and our playgrounds. No closing of the Greenpoint shelter after being there for 28 years. It took housing that the city wanted to build to force them to begin to think about closing the homeless shelter in Greenpoint Hospital. And now, 
they want to put transitional housing here. Well, Steve said it better than I could. This is a disgrace. When the city... When, when the city of New York is contemplating closing firehouses in Williamsburg on South 2nd Street, just across the way, over the Greenpoint Avenue Bridge in Long Island City, because they say we don't need it. We can't afford it. Can't afford it, and we don't need yes. more firehouses, do we? Of course we need more firehouses. Look yeah. at the building and development here. Bravo. They've already closed firehouses. So what do they want to do? They don't want to reopen a firehouse. They want to open a shelter. That is enough. Hope They're not going to do it because we're not going to let them. Absolutely. Yeah. Call up uh, uh, the chairman of the Public Safety Committee of Community Board One, who's uh, been a strong advocate for this community. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and he's a good friend of Greenpoint, Miesto Kalita. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> my name is Miesto Kalita. I'm a chair of a Public Hi, Safety Committee. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the chair of the Public Safety Committee, Community Board Number One. Community Board is fighting that homeless shelter and assessment center since day one. With the help of Joe and Steve, we do anything in our power to be against it. Uh, this homeless shelter, if it will be created, will define this community for the future, foreseeable future. We do not want it. Community board took a stand. We said no. We formed. Thank you. We sent our uh, decision to uh, Department of Homeless Services. We asked for a meeting. Most of you attend the meeting in a uh, Polish national home. And then we have to keep fighting to make sure this thing will not happen. And thank you all for coming. What I find remarkable is that there are things that this community needs. We need affordable housing. We need small businesses and jobs. So why on earth do we not use this building to make affordable housing for people in our community? Or why don't we use it as a small business incubator for, for green jobs? I mean, that's, that's other... There are many, many things that we could use this building for um, that, that we need here in this community. And so for the city to just say, uh, oh, that's very nice, Greenpoint, pat us on the head, and then say, but we're going to move ahead with what we want to do, I think that it's appropriate that we say, no. We say, this is our community, and we're going to stand up for it. We're not just going to let the city roll over us because they're rich or they got a lot of power or they get to, they get to call the shots. At a certain point, we got to stand up and say, not going to happen. This is our community, and we're going to stand up for it. Um, I want to call up uh, uh, a young woman who lives on the block uh, next to this block, because one thing that I think is, is really important when we're looking at this is that for, for an assessment center, people are going to be coming in, uh, individuals from, from all over the city. And they're going to be told, uh, they're going to go to an intake center, they're going to be told, here's a, 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 a train fare, go to Greenpoint. They're going to get off at Greenpoint <laughs> Avenue and Manhattan Avenue. And they're going to, everyone's going to walk right up these blocks and through the neighborhood. So I think that um, the neighbors have to have a say in this. And so I want to call up uh, Jean. Is she... And we're paying for that train fare. <laughs> exactly. Well, Remember that. I've lived here all my life. I mean, it's got to be some of you out here, too. This, we have to stand up like they all say. We have to say no. We don't want this. I look right there. You're talking 50 feet. This is all commercial. All you got to do is just go underneath the bridge. You'll see That's all right. residential. That's right. Okay? We, whether you own, whether you rent, whatever it is, we have to stand up for our neighborhood. Like, we cannot let this happen.
happening. We can't. We have enough, okay? So we have to say no. No. We're not going to stand for this. Thank you. This is just the beginning, okay? This is the begin. This is the first salvo in the fight against the city of New York because they're not going to be. They're not going to lay down. We're going to have to stand up in order to fight this. We need more people. But it's a Sunday afternoon, and it's a pretty good crowd, especially when you got a Subway series going on. <laughs> but we also collected 2,000 petitions for that. We have 2,000 petitions. So we have so to continue. Somebody was able to we have to continue it. this. This can't be the only... I called his office, and they didn't respond at all. Well, the next meeting, we'll get him down and find out what his right. stand is, okay? That's what we have to do. We have to rally. Steve is, in, Steve is doing this. It's a city matter. He's been in charge of this, and we're going to let him invite all of the elected officials at the next meeting. I'll tell you, uh, one thing that we could uh, start looking at as a community is that if anyone knows any good lawyers, here we have to file a lawsuit about it. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Another protest, and they didn't even call me back. It was a big Manhattan law firm. I left two messages that I'd like to, to represent us, and they didn't even call me back. Let's continue to work on that because there's something called an Article 78, which is when you go to court, you say that the government is, is acting in an arbitrary way. Uh, we have seen that there are other um, that there are there are other uses for this. That uh, in terms of, of fair share practices. Um, this, if anything violates fair share, what goes on in this community is violating fair share in the sense that we are we are taking on so much more um, than any other neighborhood in the city. Exactly. Fair we are, share. We are so far beyond our fair share of city services. So that's one next step. The other thing is we got to continue to put pressure on the owner of this building. He has the, the ability to say that he doesn't want to rent it out for that purpose. The new owner. The new owner. Yeah, the new owners, one lives in Teaneck and one lives in Borough Park. We will be supplying buses to, for people to go to pick it in front of their houses, especially on Saturday. On Saturday, the next Saturday or the Saturday after. And we need some organization where people can contact so they know about these things. Well, you can contact me. I mean, I'm right there, 1R, 122 Play Street. I'll give you my email address. And we're going to call up one more neighbor here um, who's going to say a few words uh, because, again, it's about it's about our community and it's about our neighborhood. So, Tara, let's give him a round of applause. on these neighborhoods. There's a lot of families on Clay Street. There's a lot of children that play on Clay Street. We already have, as it's been said, the, the Greenpoint Hotel, 200 people. We have the Three Quarter House, 200 people. We have 400 people already up on that block. We can't have another 200 here. That's 600 people in a low density, low rise family neighborhood. We cannot let that happen to our children. I mean, the families and children here cannot bear that. This organization is going to put a new uh, homeless shelter in Chelsea on 25th Street, an 11-story building for 300. How can they imagine 600 in Greenpoint in one block? Okay, 600 for a low-rise, low-density neighborhood. We're putting our families and children too much at risk, and it's too far away from public transportation. Anybody who walks over this bridge at night is going to be subject to what could happen here. I mean, this is just, if the plan is inconceivable, and I'm on the side of getting a lawyer to look at this. I will contribute money. I think we all can contribute money. I don't see how on fair share they can say they won't take into account the Greenpoint Hotel and the three-quarter house. Because I've, I've corresponded with Department of Homeless Services, and they say we will not take those facilities into account when assessing this shelter. And that is unheard of. That cannot happen. And we need to have a lawyer look into that. We need a legal review of that. Is that legal? And also, to have 200 every 30 days? And that's 2,400 a year? I mean, that's, that's too much. Too much for the families and the children that live here. There's too many children. Okay? For, for a single family. Not yet, but we're looking. One other thing I'd like to say is uh, 
is the, the, the people that have put the, that are putting this together and the companies that, that operate these assessment centers um, and, and the owners, I mean, let's face it, they're, they're doing all right. This is a business for them, yeah, right? Yeah. This is not the neighborhood for them. They're doing, they're doing, they're making, they're making a buck on this. And so I think that we need to keep that in mind that, that what's going on here is that's a profit motive. That's what's driving this. It's not, this isn't, this isn't that the, they're looking to, to, um, to, to, to help, to help communities. Or, it's, that's not what's going on here. They, they, they are making some money here. So I think that we need to stand together. We need to stay together. We need to stay strong and say, this is our community. I mean, you look, you look, uh, the, um, around, I mean, we're, we're a diverse community. And we're a compassionate community. We're not saying that uh, that uh, that we, you know, that, that we don't want to help out and that we don't want to help uh, take care of, of what we need to take care of. What we're saying is, let's be responsible and let's do the right thing. So, Joe, is there anything else you want to add? I think you said it, but uh, you're absolutely right. Most Holy Trinity. Forgot to mention them. Community Board One has been taking care of the homeless for years. Greenpoint Hospital Shelter, um, Pastor Ann over on Milton Street. Uh, I can't even think right now, but I'm sure I'm missing somebody. In Fort Greene, we have the homeless being taken care of at uh, um, Cumberland Diagnostic Treatment Center. Next door to them, they have homeless population right near us. We've been our brother's keeper. We've done it for years. Now it's somebody else's turn. The city can't look only to us to take care of the homeless problem in New York City. We'll take care of our own if we have to. We'd like them to take care of our own because we know we have a big problem. All you got to do is go to McGoldrick Park, where I live, right across the street, and know that we have a homeless problem. All you got to do is walk through McCarran Park. We'll take care of that problem because the city won't do it. But don't dump it on us to have all the po homeless population of the city of New York taken care of here. Is there, is there an email address where people can contact so they can find out information about? Absolutely. Uh, Steve? Uh, the, the, I think the best person to contact is Rami Metal. Rami uh, by Greenpoint. Guy, he's the guy that put this all together today. Uh, it's rmetal at council.nyc.gov. So, um, it's just like, it's, it's like metal, like uh, heavy metal, but uh, rmetal. He's not metal. How are you taking care of your homeless uh, population?